Hello and welcome to Healing from Within. I am your host, Cheryl Glick, author of Life is No Coincidence and The Living Spirit, which shares stories of awakening, spiritual communication, healing energies, miracles, and ways to use intuition and inner guidance for happiness and prosperity. Today I welcome Nick Seneca Jankel, a former guest of the show and author of his newest book, Spiritual Atheist which gives us access to the benefits of both modern medicine as well as timeless wisdom about human happiness. An understanding of this multidimensional healing process and awareness can lead to lasting changes in addiction, depression, anxiety, and chronic pain syndrome. Hello, Nick, and great to have you with us again. Great to be back. Yes. For our listeners, Nick, and to hear Nick Jankel, an award-winning thought leader and professional speaker who hosted his own BBC TV show and has taught on the MBA programs at Oxford, UCLA, and Yale, discuss an advanced brain-based transformational methodology, the Switch On Way, go to my website, CherylClick.com, and go to the radio page, scroll down to the bottom, September 25th, 2016, and you'll be able to hear that show. Nick, as listeners of Healing from Within are well aware, my guest and I, we share intimate stories, truths, <laughs> and in, intimate, yeah, and truths and insights into the universal world of spirit energy in hopes of understanding our human condition, our challenges, and to develop ways to move ahead in creating with our thoughts, our words, our actions, our perceptions, a clearer view of how to manifest and create a healthy life that serves mm -hmm. us and also our work communities. In today's episode of Healing from Within, Nick, a scientist and medic, brings the latest science into his work, cognitive, behavioral, emotional, and interoceptive, and blends it with timeless wisdom and offers us tools for transformation and for self-mastery of emotions. We will discover how he has overcome being diagnosed with fibromyalgia or chronic pain syndrome, depression while studying medicine, to finally healing his own childhood trauma and discover happiness in living with spirit. And for our listeners, there's nobody on the planet who is not dealing with their childhood and societal training and trying to overcome whatever trauma happened to them. We're all in this boat together. Nick, you may remember, I always love to ask my guests to think back uh, to their earlier life, childhood, or sometime earlier in their life, and remember a person, place, event, or persistent thought, perhaps, that may have led them to the lifestyle and values they embrace now in their adult life. So go back a bit. <laughs> you like that? I, I do. I, I have a story here that I read that I loved, but I'm going to let's see if you pick the one that I picked. Go ahead. Well, there's, um, yeah, actually, the book I, I've just published uh, talks about when I first um, was a religious man, a uh, boy, religious boy, and um, I used to sit in uh, the synagogue um, in London, in a very beautiful synagogue, very old synagogue from the 1850s, and uh, I wasn't really very much into the service. Um, I found it very boring and not very relevant to me, uh, but I used to flick to the back of the book, uh, <laughs> the, the prayer book, and there were all these wonderful quotes from people that no one seemed to talk about in the service. They never m were mentioned, really. Uh, I found out a long time later they were uh, mystical Jews, Kab Kabbalists. Mm. Um, or Kabbalists. Or, may, or maybe from the Essenes. They yes. were a mystical yes, group. Exactly. Yeah, 4,000 years these, ago. Right. I, I used to read little fragments. They weren't big pieces, but they were much more nourishing to me than the Old Testament stories. Um, and uh, in some ways, I, I was yearning for that for many years to come back to that. Um, but. Uh, I couldn't access it through traditional religion. It didn't work for me. 
and I had to find my way through atheism, through science, through logic, back to spirituality um, on a very long journey. And I, I was on that journey with you, though you're in England <laughs> and I'm here in New York, because when I was a little girl, I also occasionally went to the temple, yeah. and, and I sat there, and I could not believe what they... I said, they're missing the truth of who they are and mm. what life is really about. I just couldn't buy into it either. Yeah, I couldn't get it. Couldn't get <clears> it. <throat> so it, it, it was, it, it, uh, to come back to that teenage version of me took a long journey um, through philosophy, through science, um, to come back to that truth and then also to then be able to embrace it without being part of the conditioning of the religion that I was part of. Right. And the family conditioning and the family trauma that was um, all wrapped up in in my original uh, religious family life. So I had to break free. I want, I chose to break free of all of it and then to return to the sort of the source of the fountain rather than um, spend time, um, you know, in well, the structures of the yes. religion. Well, Nick, you know what it was? You and I as children and now as adults, we knew that there was more to us than the physical life through to the words and the stories and the rules and regulations. We knew that uh, through philosophy, history, psychology, and through our education, uh, that we were in search of who we really were and how we could relate personally to a divine, energetic, creative life force or source or the divine or universal mm. energy, whatever we call it, because we we knew we were more than our physical ego-based reality and we didn't know how to express it and we couldn't buy into all the things we were hearing because it just wasn't the truth. Mm. It wasn't enough. And in our search and through uh, years of meditation and I belonged to a mystery school at one point and through seeking and searching and allowing ourselves to surrender to this energy of the divine, uh, we have been able to find peace and healing. Healing, you know, is a multidimensional uh, quality. It's, it, it's our mind, our body, our spirit. It's not just the symptoms of any illness or disease. Uh, and we have been pretty much able... Uh, to find that and that's what we share with our listeners today so what is the life philosophy of spiritual atheism well it basically in a nutshell it's a lot to it um, it involves morality it involves um, decision making intuition guidance uh, all sorts of things but the nubble of it the core and the reason I wrote the book is um to the life philosophy is to understand that our material self, um, our biology, our, our nerves, um, our guts, the stuff we make, the money we make, the products we manufacture, that whole material world is a really important part of reality, um, and it's science is the best way we have yet to understand that reality. Um, but it's only half of reality. The other yes. half is our consciousness, our subjectivity, our interiority, our feelings, our thoughts, our awareness, our senses, our deepest intuitions. And that's the other half of reality. And the book basically tries to lay out a philosophy where you can embrace them both. So you don't say, well, I'm only spiritual, spiritual so I'm going to ignore science and ignore that wonderful, um, you know, the tens of thousands of people doing research every day into every part of the material world. Uh, but nor, neither do we then go into science and say, well, everything that we can't prove by science does not exist, because that way be demons, and I've lived that life myself, as a traditional old-fashioned atheist. And so spiritual atheism is saying, you know, not only can science and spirituality coexist, and the material world, our material life and our conscious life can coexist, as I wrote the book, I realized it's not just that they can coexist, they have to coexist, and they have to be brought together in each individual. Because we are a material body, we, are, we have stuff that happens in, in um, you know, nerves and, and ions and uh, all sorts of things like that. And we're also a conscious being, 
and what I see the core root of suffering in the world comes from not being able to integrate what our mind knows and what our heart senses together. Absolutely. There is the problem in many of the religions. They separate us from the truth, the unity, the oneness, the fact that we've never been separated from the divine energy of creation. It's within us. It's around us. It's the life force. Without that, uh, we're not here, actually. It's the consciousness. And, and when the physical and spiritual, if we'll look at it that way, are brought together, uh, there is no duality. So exactly. that is the exactly. mistake in thinking we must have both. I like the way you said we absolutely must have it merged and combined. So absolutely. Now, you also say there are uh, we must come to understand the state of mind and being now being exposed all over the world to understand how this culture of despair has come to be. And if you just turn on the news, I don't care what country you're in, uh, right. you're going to to learn that depression is now the single greatest burden on on health world care along with yeah. suicide anxiety you give a lot of facts uh, would you like to tell us a little bit about that well, I found out today uh, that in uh, the UK where I'm based uh, one in four 14 year old girls has self-harmed by the age of 14 so one in four 25 percent and that's just the ones that we're are reporting. And this epidemic of mental health, is, is it, it sort of befuddles the, the powers that be, you know, the great thinkers of the world. But when you understand, as you just said, when you understand that both religion and science in their ideological state separate us from what I call in the book connected consciousness, yes. the, the sense of feeling that we're all one and... and we call that love, but that's just a metaphor for the, for the feeling of connection. When we don't feel that connection, we, we suffer. And then it becomes uh, mental ill health, and in my case it became physical ill health, uh, becomes addictions. Um, and it's no mystery. To, to, when you realize what, when you've healed yourself through love, you realize that the, only, the mystery is why no one else realizes that the suffering in the world, not all of it, uh, you know, some of it's air pollution, some of it's climate change, some of it's uh, poverty. Absolutely, there's material world problems too. But the mental health is a problem in our consciousness. It's not a problem in matter. It's a problem in consciousness. It becomes a problem in matter because when you have a negative uh, conditioning and, and, and suffering in your mind from trauma from the past, that becomes physiological eventually, right? So fibromyalgia something I had and, and um, it's in the background of my life today, but it's still present if I allow it to be, if I, if I let go of my own self-care and self-well-being. Um, it, 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 it becomes physiological. Well, it, you, it, you know, it also, changed. the word suffering has and being separate from the piece of your being. You know, when you look at well, babies and children, you will see how if they're wounded in any way or hurt, they get past it very quickly because right. they're flowing in the energy and the freedom of joy and love, mostly, except, of course, mm -hmm. in families where, uh, you know, there are serious economic or emotional or physical challenges, and mm -hmm. then it's a different story. But suffering, we were not born to suffer. Many religions right. sort of think we were born to suffer. We were born to evolve through any challenge and find the opportunity to find this love within us and allow acceptance, surrender uh, to conditions in the physical world and ultimately change it by our thoughts, our actions, and our knowingness and to create something good out of something that might seem bad at the moment because there's really mm. no good or bad there's only experience and how yeah. we and how we handle it so uh, i like the fact that you listed all the things and problems all over the world that we're dealing with you know uh, we have um land that's infertile now and the oceans are acid acidifying and and ice is melting and alarming 
alarming rates. This is all because of what man has done on the planet. It's all the, right. the fact of misusing our resources and mistreating people. So that's where we're moving along. So how does the life philosophy of spiritual atheism, which we're talking about today, give us access to the benefits of both modern medicine as well as timeless wisdom about human well-being. How does this work as a practice? Mm. So, firstly, to say that the, the, the idea of the, the book title, Spiritual Atheist, was to bring around this idea that two things you think aren't connected or actually can be one thing. So, um, it's called the posh, the posh philosophical term is a dual aspect. Uh, there are two aspects to our being, uh, consciousness and matter, but there's only one thing. So it's, uh, for me, I'm a non-dualist. There's only one thing. So in every moment, we get to, to bring um, what we've learned from science, what we've learned from reading, what we've learned from our doctor, what we've learned from our um, physicians um, into our decisions. But we also get to bring in the other half of our reality, which is our consciousness, which uh, the best ways most people have found to understand their consciousness is through some form of practice, um, wisdom practice, and it can be ecstatic and hot, it can be cool and meditative, it can be dialogical between two people, it can be tantric. Um, it doesn't really matter what you choose, but you get to bring your wisdom into every uh, decision, you get to bring your science into every decision. And, and, and you, for me, the, the spiritual atheist before they make any, any decision, business decision, health decision, life decision, you bring the science and the evidence and you bring the intuition and the guidance within and the wisdom within and you make a choice in that moment for that moment. It's the only moment that ever existed like it. Yes. And that's where you make your choice. And then you make another one the next day and, and five more the next day and you become practiced at bringing these two aspects of us. So it doesn't mean we close our eyes to the material world and pretend no. it's all about med meditation. Uh, it's not just about meditation. It's a crucial part of it. But we also live in the material world. And so I'm out there saying you need to bring both in. You need to be able to harmonize them within you. And you need to be able to make fully awake, aware choices. Um, because as you said, the problems we have with climate change are simply a manifestation of billions of people's consumer choices. It's that simple. Yes, absolutely. And Nick, let me just say to you, you're anything about, but an atheist. You're really a true, a Vitruvian man. And I would hope to be considered at this point a Vitruvian woman because uh, we are bringing it all together. And it's the only way that we're going to solve a lot of the problems right. that the world is facing. Now, right. how did you deal with your health challenges, fibromyalgia, depression, anxiety, and obesity? Look, we all have issues. There's none of us, oh, no yeah. one walking on the planet who is not uh, challenged in one way or another. We're right. not perfect, and we, we're, we don't have to be. We have to just find the way to be comfortable in our body and in our thoughts and in our life. Now, you mentioned you went to India and, and some wonderful things happened. So tell us a little about that. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the nuts and bolts of it is, simple version, I don't think you could, anyone can heal um, profound psychological distress. Uh, I include, for me, fibromyalgia as a physical manifestation of profound emotional distress um, without being able to presence uh, some kind of um, love, connection, consci consciousness, whatever you want to call it, oneness mm -hmm. within us on a daily basis. This is not something that happens once on the retreat. This is a daily practice because every moment we feel that pain, that constriction, that limitation, um, that's when we release it into this feeling of love. And I didn't want to be a spiritual teacher. I only did do this work because it, from my own personal journey as a absolutely uh, hardcore scientist and atheist, it wasn't enough to heal me. Science isn't, wasn't enough to heal depression. Um, and the only way I could do it was being able to come back to something bigger than the pain, bigger than the fear, bigger than the trauma. And the only thing I've ever found, I don't think there's anything that exists in the world other than this feeling of being connected, which we feel as love. And that, when you can present it five times a day, and you can release the pain and the trauma, 
into it, then you can release the memories, then you can release the physical manifestations, the habits, the addictions. And it's not, it's like super simple, but it takes 20 years to do. So it's, it's you know, five oh, years. Oh, that's about years. what it's taken me 20 yeah, years. Yeah, it's a lifetime journey, you know. It's not like and it it's never overnight. done. Yes, it's never done. But you it's wrote. never done. Over you, it's never done. Will never be done because there's much more beyond here. Uh, you it doesn't know. have to be done either. That's the thing. People, there's no. Why do we, why do we want it to be done? It's a it's a wonderful yes, adventure. We, right. <laughs> we continue on. No one could learn enough in one lifetime. Over time, exactly. you, you wrote this, Nick. You wrote, over time, I came to see that what I truly needed had always been waiting for me within. This quintessential. Mm mystical experience opened the doors of my perception and showed me a place beyond my chattering mind and aching body where I could find the peace and purpose we all long for. I have since Mm. learned to return to this place, whether through meditation, dance, or loving intimacy, to take refuge. I think you were discussing something that happened to you in India uh, Mm. when you had uh, a moment where your consciousness was free, perhaps, of your physical body, and that you truly knew who you were. Mm. Is that yes, so? Yes, I went from being a sort of spiritual um, optimist, like I hope, it's all, I hope there's oneness, sounds good, uh, feels right, and then in India I had a kind of, uh, this is about 12, 13 years ago, I had a absolute categorical, can't be argued with, experience of my connect my continuity with everything that is in the world and my little self as i often call it and yeah. my little questioning terrified self just literally blinked out for probably just a few seconds but it was enough to go from being a theoretical uh, non-dual spiritual person uh, seeker to a absolute knowledge just and that, it's never left me and I've gone through many difficult times since then it's not like it's been plain sailing I've gone through all sorts of very scary moments but I can always return to this one absolute piece of knowledge I know it all, so much so that it almost puts every other bit of truth in the world can be questioned um, and that's what philosophy does well, it constructs true nick when you have a transformational experience that you can no longer deny and when you're fortunate as i have been fortunate to have many in many places in many ways to know the Mm -hmm. truth of our uh, soul and spirit and eternal energy uh i'll give you one small one i i was in a meditation group with about 12 very advanced people Oh, years ago, maybe eight years ago. <laughs> yeah. And during the meditation, we asked a question. It, it, it was about 2012. You know, people were so concerned with what was going to happen in 2012, was the, or was it the year 2000, that the Mayans said there would be a big shift or change. Yeah. Well, yeah. I asked the question. I felt myself as a speck, just mm. an atom of life. Mm. And there I was in this universe, uh, but I'm saying to myself, I'm not in the body, but, but it's me. I'm talking, I'm thinking, I'm aware of everything, but I'm only this speck of humanity. Mm. And I did get frightened in the moment. And then when I came back in the group, we all discussed what had happened to us. One girl had also asked the same question, and she saw it not as dying or death or change she saw it uh, an evolution of physical life on the planet and humanity yeah. going to a new level of yeah. understanding who they were so mm. I just share that with you because uh, I know you had many experiences too and I wish for our listeners out there that they allowed themselves to have these moments of awareness because it's the way forward out of any suffering, any worry, any physical pain. Because once you know the truth, you've conquered fear. So therefore you've conquered exactly. you've conquered death. So exactly. why Eventually do you, you conquer death? Yes. Why do you not this is an important question. Why do you not believe 
that happiness is not very important. That's <laughs> sort of like a, a roundabout question. <laughs> <laughs> so before I answer that, I just want to super reiterate what you just said. So you Every believe so you believe happiness is important. <laughs> I believe it's actually no, I don't believe it's important, but okay. I do believe that every listener has to find the way to this feeling of love for themselves. No one can give it to you. Um, and as you said, Cheryl, you've got to let let yourself have it. And it took me many years to let go of all the things that were stopping me, all my ideas about reason and science, and all my ideas about what was good and bad and right and wrong. Um, so, the, and so moving into the happiness question, I think happiness is something that, when it uh, when it's there, wonderful, great for us. Um, but um, there's lots of other parts of every day where we're not necessarily happy. Someone said, "Do are you happy?" You go, "Well, I don't know, maybe, maybe not." I'm a bit tired and a bit sad. Um, and tired and sad are totally fine things to feel. What I think you can feel all the time is a sense of being. Um, on your sort of evolutionary edge, which I would call thriving. So you're growing, you're expanding, you're doing the work, you're, you're healing the suffering each day. You know, in the moment that you're, you're crying over a moment of when you were three, a traumatic moment, you're not happy, but you are thriving. You're in the absolute sweet spot of your life. And so I think the search for happiness is a slightly um, a sl- a red herring, and the search well, should really be for thriving in the yes. moment, being and I, alive. Uh, I also think no one, and I often say this to people, no one can make you happy or unhappy. Right. It's something yeah. that comes from within you when you find yeah. what is important to you and, and, and you uh, give up the world and their expectations for you. In my mm-hmm. book, The Living Spirit, I, I wrote this to address this subject. As I receive mm-hmm. intuitive messages from my clients, many people have asked me, how can I find peace and happiness in my life? This is the answer I give them. Before there can be peace and happiness in a person's life and in the world, every person must be responsible to do their own work about acknowledging what needs to change within their attitudes or actions so they they can better relate to the outer world. Finding right. true happiness and joy is the natural outcome of self-investigations, and there are no shortcuts. No one can make mm. you happy or unhappy unless you give him <laughs> or her the power to do that by surrendering or giving mm-hmm. your own power away. And you and I, mm. as Vitruvian people, would no longer <laughs> do that. Perhaps we once did that, but we would no longer do that. And you wrote, Nick, yeah. much is at stake beyond our own personal happiness. I believe that the po- political frictions, terror, conflict, economic inequality, and environmental turmoil that we face can all be traced back to the schism within that separates us from ourselves, from each other, and from the planet that we rely on for our very lives. I can trace in everything from the rise of ugly nationalism to the dominance of daily life by consumerism to this split within our hearts and minds. So there we are. Mm. Where we started, there is no split there is no schism, exactly. there is no is separation, no and we exactly. must all come to uh, resolve those misconceptions and get back to the truth. I want to mm. thank you, Nick Seneca Jankel, author of your newest book, Spiritual Atheist, for sharing your search for the universal truth of life in so many places in the world and within your heart and mind essence, and for bravely going where few men have gone before, but now in these changing times are finding it possible to access because of the work a few trusted messages are engaged in. To learn more about spiritual atheism and openness to all possibilities, go to nickjankel.com. In summarizing today's episode of Healing from Within, Nick Seneca Jankel, a free, open-minded man of heart, soul, and intellect, has shown us a clearer way to understand that science, religion, and metaphysics seek to offer us a way to better understand and know ourselves and our connection to the universal source of life or energy and to find greater trust in living with love and compassion 
faith for creating a life of purpose, passion, and authentic happiness. Nick wrote, The great challenge to people of reason is that we cannot push through to the mystical with the reasoning mind alone. Trained in the ways of Western rationalism, I had for years approached it with my intellect. I had read mystical texts and analyzed them with my mind, rather than allowing them to be felt in my body-mind. I did not know until I experienced oneness regularly that the metaphor organ through which we experience unity is not our head, but our heart. Simply put, we cannot experience the expansive sense of the connector through our thinking protector. We need to get out of our head and into our entire body and mind. And this is the truth. Nick and I are delighted you have joined us today on this journey within to the truth of living with excellence and individual awareness of intuition and compassion for both the physical and scientific and spiritual essence of life. Be open to new thoughts and live each day in exploring your inner joy as it conquers the fears of the physical and ego-based world reality. I am Cheryl Glick, host of Healing from Within, and invite you to visit my website, CherylGlick.com, to listen to and read about leaders throughout the world from science, spirituality, metaphysics, psychology, energy healing, every religion, culture, gender, sexual preference, share their insights and methodology for finding truth and practical ways for living life in sync with all aspects of yourself. Shows may also be heard on webtalkradio.net and dreamvision7radio.com. Thank you.